South Asia is a young region in terms of its demographic transition, in a way like East Asia was a couple of decades ago. So it's this particular point in time when you have a lot of people reaching working age. Uh, and so you go from families that had four children to families that have two children. So even without a big gain in productivity, when you count per capita, that already brings you growth. But in addition, a young population is a population that saves for the future and that brings investment because there's money. And uh, there's a lot of uh, catch up for a region like South Asia. Going through urbanization, just moving people from low productivity in agricultural areas to higher productivity in urban areas, all of these things come together. And they are coming along nicely in the region, especially as there is more reform impetus. Um, so I would say that's what uh, lies behind uh, South Asia being strongly positioned to continue growing as it is now. And what does South Asia have to learn from East Asia? I think uh, there are many things that uh, work at, uh, very well in East Asia. I think East Asia is a success story in terms of development. A um, couple of things that East Asia got right uh, in general uh, that I think are very important. One was uh, the urbanization story. I think uh, East Asia invested heavily in its cities, had empowered urban or provincial authorities behind the cities, put cities to compete to each other, with each other to attract business, to attract revenue. So the urbanization uh, in East Asia, of course, it has challenges, but it has been a big success. By comparison, urbanization in South Asia is still a bit more haphazard. Uh, we see less of people moving to the city and more of the city moving to you in a more organic way. Uh, the other thing that East Asia got right was global integration. And our report this time is about keeping the focus on global integration. When you work in global value chains, when you work for uh, global markets, that sets high standards of quality or delivery. There is a lot of learning, a lot of efficiency that comes through global integration. And are there any countries that stand out as particular success stories in your report or underperformers? I will not say underperformers. It's a, a region that has a very big country, that's India. India in South Asia is in some ways even bigger than China in East Asia, when you put it in perspective. Uh, and India is going through a lot of dynamism at this point. Uh, I think that's carrying the region in a very positive way. Overall, I would say the eastern part of the region, Bhutan, Bangladesh, India, is growing faster than the western part, Pakistan and especially Afghanistan. Uh, Pakistan has come back from a period of uh, macroeconomic fragility uh, very strongly, very nicely, and we see dynamism in, in Pakistan. Afghanistan is going through a challenging transition, uh, but I will not say that uh, we have uh, cases of major concern. The entire region is showing a lot of dynamism. And what about China's role? Is it seen as purely a rival, especially for India, or is it really a partner for the region? I think uh, both rivalry can be a good thing. When uh, it challenges you, when it forces you to make decisions, when you realize that the game is high, uh, I think that's a very stimulating thing. And we see prospects for collaboration. Uh, we see quite a lot happening through different initiatives where uh, China is involved. China has strong partnerships with several of the countries in the region. So we tend to believe that is a positive role. In a way, there is still a difference with East Asia is South Asian countries export mainly to advanced countries. East Asian countries export a lot to China as part of a value chain. So the, the integration, uh, the, the commercial links with, with China are a bit different compared to those in East Asia. But overall, I would say it's a positive influence. And have you seen a positive appetite for the Belt and Road Initiative, especially for countries like Pakistan, which border China? I would say in general, across uh, South Asia, there is enormous appetite to think about corridors. This is a region that could be a hinge between East Asia and Europe. So if you put it in a longer term perspective, there's no doubt, and there are all sorts of initiatives, many of them building on historic links. If you think of uh, the, the old trunk road in the case of uh, India and South Asia, if you think of the Silk Road. Um, so there are lots of initiatives. I think in the case of Pakistan, we see a lot of movement going on. But I, I, across the entire region, for instance, now 
connecting through Bangladesh towards Myanmar for uh, South Asia has become also extremely important.